Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Johnson with Couples Create Cashflow. Today, we're going to talk about HELOCs and the risks and benefits that go along with them. So if you've never gotten a HELOC before, this would be a great um, tool for you as you consider whether or not a HELOC would be a good um, way to go for you. Now, obviously, I love HELOCs, and so I'm going to be talking about them from that perspective, but I also see the benefits of um, kind of outlining the potential risks that go into it. Um, for me, I love HELOCs because I've understood the risks fully and have taken steps to mitigate those risks so that they are not a factor in my own way I do my finances. So let's take a look at what these risks and benefits will be. And first of all, I just want to say if you want to start velocity banking, which a HELOC is a very important part of this, but it, the concept is you're using a HELOC to reduce your debt, increase your monthly cash flow, and then be able to use more money per month to invest into income producing assets. That's really the main play. It's not just about getting rid of debt. It's more about how do you use that money to invest for the future. So it can be a complicated process. There's multiple factors that go into it. Um, but one of the main first things is to understand the concept and acquire a HELOC so that you can start doing it. Um, in order to do that, I've made this kind of easy for you. I've got a free guide that also includes a checklist so that when you're looking for different HELOC products with different lenders, you can compare them apples to apples. You can know which criteria to ask about and to really focus in on those important qualities of a HELOC for doing velocity banking. Because not every HELOC is the same. They're all different depending on the lender. There are going to be some things that are typical, and there's going to be some things that are very unique to a specific bank or credit union. So my guide and my checklist will be a good place to start, and that's totally free. Just click on the link in the description below. It'll take you to a site where you can enter your email, and you can get access to that guide and checklist. You will get added to my email list. That's just going to be me sending um, reminder video reminders and updates as I have more free things to offer. And it's not going to be a spam. I'm not going to sell your email to anybody else. Um, and then the other thing is I do have a new course that's going to come out on March 15th. And it's entitled How to Get the Right HELOC for Velocity Banking. So if that's interesting to you, I have a link in the description below that will take you to that page as well. You can learn a little bit more about it. And also, if you would like individualized coaching, I can also offer that as well. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below for interest in that as well. All right, let's get into the topic. What is a HELOC? So generally speaking, a HELOC is just a home equity line of credit. So you've got your value of your home and you have your loans against it. And the difference between your loan balance and the value of the home is equity. So an equity line of credit is when the bank looks at your value of your house and then they look at what would that balance be if you took 90% of that value, and then they take that number, subtract out any loans you currently have. So if you have a $200,000 home, 90% of that is going to be $180,000. If you had $150,000 in loans, that would leave a $30,000 gap. And that's your equity that you could access through a HELOC. So as you can see, a lender would be baking in a 10% um, buffer from the value of your home to the amount that could be financed against your house. Um, and that allows for the fluctuations of the housing market. All right, and then interest rates will float with the prime rate um, and it's based on your daily balance. So they have an annual rate, which is a certain number, let's say 6%. It's cut into 365 tiny little slivers and each one of those percentages is, at, is applied to your daily balance and then over the course of a month, all of those daily balance interest charges get lumped into one interest-only payment that you are required to pay. So if you are doing velocity banking and you have your paychecks going straight into your HELOC, your monthly payment is covered. You don't have any extra expense. And then monthly payments, like I said, it, there is no principal payment that goes with it. And that may sound dangerous, actually, because you're not paying down the balance. And that's why velocity banking is truly the best way of using a HELOC, because 
you're putting your paychecks directly into the line of credit so that you're reducing not just the interest that's accrued for the day, but you're reducing the principal balance. And that is reducing how much interest you'd have to pay tomorrow, right? All right, so let's look at just the general overview of velocity banking. You're leveraging the funds that are available through your HELOC. You're gonna pay large chunks of money towards your debts and you're getting your paychecks direct deposited into your HELOC. And as you're doing this process, you're reducing how much interest you owe as soon as that money gets to your bank account. And I've got some other videos about how I've done this in my own life. And I've got a case study video to kind of really show you the nuts and bolts of how it works. But in general, this is what you're trying to do. All right, so let's talk about three benefits and three risks that go into velocity banking and specifically owning a HELOC. So number one, the first benefit is that you get to control your equity. So typically the value that you have in equity of your home is usually frozen. And what I mean by that is you can't just go to the bank and withdraw that money and use it because it's in your house. So you may, may have made an improvement in your house or the market has gone up and your house is worth more, but it doesn't mean you have more money in your pocket. And so with a HELOC, you're actually accessing a portion of that equity for emergency purposes or for velocity banking, or let's say you're gonna actually improve your house some more, you could actually take the equity from your home to improve your value of your house and stack your equity with more equity and use your equity to make your home more valuable and create more equity out of nowhere. So it can be very helpful because it's tied to your house. Um, and then even with a paid off home, and actually, especially with a paid off home, you may want to have a HELOC, even if you don't have a balance on it, even if you don't access it, because it allows you to take advantage of the fact that A, you don't have a monthly payment for your mortgage anymore. B, your loan is actually just a line of credit that you can access for any type of opportunity that makes sense from an investing point of view or from a, like I said, improving your house point of view. And then when you use a HELOC properly, your home equity, the access you have to it actually speeds up your process of becoming independently wealthy or financially free. Because as you pay off these large chunks towards your debts, you're reducing the monthly payments that you have to pay and the amount of interest that you have to pay, which frees up more money to stay in your system. Um, and what I found is that as I've used a HELOC, it's actually easier sometimes, not always, but sometimes to spend less money because I look at my balance and I say, oh, I've got a balance. I don't want to be spending more money. It would just increase how much interest I pay. Whereas if I had $10,000 sitting in a bank account, I wouldn't be thinking about the fact that I need that money for other things or, or may not want to save more. I may say, oh, I've got $10,000. I'm rich. I can go on a vacation or I can go buy something cool. And that would not be a wise use of my money. It would not allow me to earn more, or generate more cash flow. So this idea of using this HELOC as a tool to pay down your debt or pay off your home mortgage, it's a way of creating more equity in your home um, out of, or it creates more cash flow in your month, but can also create more equity in your home by improving it with your own equity. Talked about that. All right. Second big benefit. This is a revolving credit line. It functions like a credit card in that there is a limit to how much you can spend. But unlike credit cards, your home is what secures the loan or the line limit. It's not technically a loan. Um, credit cards are unsecured. So your income is what's securing that credit limit. And what that means, the, the main difference about that is you are in a position with a HELOC to truly just access the money that you have generated through making your mortgage payments. This is not some imaginary money that comes out of thin air because Chase Bank or another big Wells Fargo, somebody gives you money that you've never earned, you've never done any work for. This is tapping into the equity that you have generated in your home because you're making on-time payments to your mortgage, you're improving your house, and the housing market's going up. So this is not fake money. This is real asset for you, and it's just giving it to you 
in a credit line so that you don't actually pay interest on it unless you use it. You can have a credit limit of $50,000, never use it once, and you're not paying anything to have that open. You're just giving yourself a tool. And even if you're not sure how to use it yet, having the tool in place provides you with opportunities that you don't already have. As you pay down your balance, you gain access to the funds again. So here's a big, big difference between people that take out a second position or a second mortgage on their house and they just get a lump sum or someone who gets a home equity line of credit and has the option to borrow that money. Let's say you're given a $50,000 loan. Now you have monthly payments each month and for 20 years or however long the term is until that is paid off. Now you've created less cash flow. You are not keeping as much money at the end of the month. And so you've, you've decreased your freedom. You've actually decided, I'd rather have a lump of money right now, and I'm going to pay for it for a long time with the interest that goes with it. Whereas with a HELOC, it's telling you, you have money that you could spend at your discretion. You don't need it all at once. So unless you're about to make a really big purchase that's going to produce more income, it's it's really better to just have it on a line of credit that revolves, which just means you use it, you pay it off, you use it, you pay it off. You don't have to reapply for a new loan every time you want to use your funds. And you only pay interest on the amount that you've borrowed. So that can really influence how much interest you pay in general. It's really important to think about, even if you had a higher interest rate on a line of credit, you, the amount of interest that you pay, the actual paid interest is going to be lower, even if the rate is higher, because of the fact that you're reducing your balance quicker than you would on an amortized loan. And I should probably do an extra video just on that. Uh, that's kind of a complicated one. All right, another big benefit, ease of access. Usually a loan requires an application process and underwriting and closing costs. With a HELOC, once you've opened your, your, your account, which is just an appraisal and a fee, and the bank has to approve you, but typically it's not that hard. It's not like if you're getting a home mortgage or anything like that. Once you have it open, you don't need to get approval from the bank. You just pay somebody for what they're doing. You purchase a property, you purchase a business, you buy an asset of some sort. It is all up to you how you want to use it. And for some people, that's actually a hard thing. It's not an easy thing to have access to your money easily because a lot of people are scrimping and saving and not sure what to do with their money. And so then when they're given the opportunity to have money, they don't know what to do with it. And so I would love to help you understand what to do with it. But I'm just telling you that this is a huge benefit. Whether you trust yourself with that much money or not, the ability to access your capital, your money, your equity that you have saved by making mortgage payments is so important. It gives you so many options. It gives you a sense of security and it gives you the ability to actually look at how do you play this on the offense, not on the defense? How do you play your finances to win and not just to keep yourself from losing? There is a difference. All right. HELOCs that are well-designed can replace your checking account. Okay. They, they function very much like a checking account. They come with checks, an online banking option, an app. You can transfer funds in and out. You can pay someone with a check and they don't even know that you're using a HELOC. They just think you're using your checking account, which really plays with your mind when you start to think about it. It's like if you have a $50,000 HELOC, what's the difference between a $50,000 HELOC and $50,000 in cash in a checking account? I mean, at the end of the day, the fact that you have $50,000 in a checking account means you're not paying interest to somebody else. True. But what it means is you have $50,000 of spending power. If you have a $50,000 HELOC with no balance, you're not paying interest on that either, but you have $50,000 of spending power. But you have to have a plan for paying it back. You can't just spend it all and then not know how you're going to pay it back. And that's where you really need to have a strategy like Velocity Banking to make good use of this tool. All right, what are the risks? I've got three major risks. Floating interest rates is the biggest one that I hear a lot of people complain about, and it's because the interest rates typically are a little higher than a home mortgage, and they will go up and down with the prime rate, which is determined by somebody that's not you. It's determined by the Federal Reserve. And right now, it's 2023, early 2023. We have seen a hike in the rates, and now they're starting to come back down, and it just shows you that there, there can be volatility in the economy. And you will pay a higher interest rate when things are tightened up at the Fed. That's fine. 
Because what ends up happening is you still use the same strategy. The interest rate does not matter as much as the strategy that you're using. So if you've got a fixed rate on a home mortgage for 30 years or something like that, yeah, that's great. You know that for 30 years, your rate's going to be exactly the same. You are taking a slight bigger risk by taking on a floating interest rate. But if you are using your, your tool wisely, it's not going to be the same as if you had a mortgage for that same balance because you're only going to be using what you need. You're not going to be maxing out your HELOC. You're not going to be paying interest on the full line limit like you would with a mortgage. Your full balance is whatever daily balance you're charged is charged interest based on that day, which does mean if the rate changes tomorrow, you're going to get charged more than you got charged today if it goes up, right? So the unpredictability of that is sometimes scary. Another big risk that I hear people talking about is your HELOC or your line getting called by the bank, which just means that the bank will ask you to pay off the line in full or they will freeze the credit limit. So basically, let's say you had $50,000 of credit limit and you had a $20,000 balance. They might change that credit limit from 50 down to 20 to create a better situation for them. And in that case, you would not be able to access your full amount. They even might freeze it to the point where they don't allow you to make purchases or withdraw the money, but you can make payments on it until you pay it off. They may actually also give you the option to turn it into a mortgage and put an amortized payment out there, which would take away the aspect of it that helps you with velocity banking, which is the revolving account where you can pay down the balance and then have more access to cash. Um, so all those things would be really unfortunate. And, and I put in here, the second position is more risky than first position. So what's the difference? Well, if you've paid off your mortgage on your house, and you owe nobody anything, no, no balance on your loans, then you can get up to 90% loan to value on a HELOC that is in the first or only position, which means if that particular bank wanted to, uh, or there, there's some reason you couldn't pay anymore, the bank could then have the access to your house. If it's in second position, then whoever is the lender at the first position would be able to receive whatever payments they can to settle their debt before the bank that's in the second position would get a chance to recover anything that they wanted to. And this only happens in cases where somebody forecloses, right? And because they've stopped making payments, the bank doesn't get money back. They're trying to protect themselves, right? So here are some situations. You could be you know, not paying down your balance or your home value might go down. Um, the other piece that could happen is if, so like, let's say the, the value of your home goes down to where the loan amounts between your HELOC and your mortgage put together is higher than the value of your house. And maybe the financial picture looks bleak. Maybe they're kind of concerned about the housing market staying low for a while. Well, then they might call your HELOC. They might say, you know what, we're not going to keep this open. We're going to switch this over to a mortgage or we're going to switch this over to um, just asking you to pay it off in full. And if that does happen, you would have to get creative in how you solve that problem, right? Um, and then if your credit gets damaged significantly by poor credit behavior, that could also trigger the lender to call the loan. So this would be something that you have control over, right? Like if you declared bankruptcy, they might call your, your HELOC. Now, in this case, if you're in bankruptcy, you might not have to pay back your HELOC, uh, but you might never be able to get a HELOC ever again, right? That's a problem. Um, so your credit score, you know, they're not going to be running your credit while you have a HELOC. They don't care that much. However, if they see warning signs like your balance is really high, you're not making payments, they might, and the housing market's gone down, they would start looking at HELOC accounts first and say, you know, which of these people are the highest risk for us? Who would we be concerned about paying us back? Well, it's going to be the people that have not been making payments. They have not shown good activity with their money and frankly are just less likely to pay back the bank. So they would be looking at those first. And along this lines as well, um, I just want to mention that with velocity banking, you have two big risks that you're solving for just in the way that the strategy works. So if you're worried about high balance, well, that's why we have the two thirds rule. The two thirds rule says whatever your balance is, don't, or the limit is, don't make your balance go higher than two thirds of the amount that they're allowing you to have. 
That allows you with even more cushion for the housing market to change. They've already baked in 10%, but you can give them an extra fluctuating percentage point there of giving of freedom in case the housing market does go down. So for example, if you have a, let's say $30,000 HELOC, you would not want to spend more than 20,000 on it just to be able to keep it in a good debt utilization right range. And that, that helps your credit score too, by the way. And then the also the problem of missing payments is solved as your paychecks are your payments every time they're deposited. So you're paying down your principal multiple times per month. So if I put on my objective banker hat, I would look at somebody who's doing velocity banking as someone who is wise with their money. I mean, I would be looking at them as making multiple payments into this account. Like if, if I didn't know anything about the person, I just looked at the transactions, I would be impressed that they're making substantial payments every single month on the balance because their paychecks are going right in. Um, so I think that would be looked at really positively by most bankers. All right, and then unrestricted spending. This is this kind of goes along with the ease of access. I think this is the other side of the coin, right? You have a lot of access to money, but now we've also got nothing restricting you from just spending it all. And this is where I'd say that HELOCs are really only appropriate for people who have established good financial habits and consistently have shown monthly cash flow. Because the whole point of having the HELOC is to only spend up to what you can pay off in six to 12 months time. And a lot of times when you're getting started, the best way to do this is go six months at a time because it's manageable. You're not, you're not creating this burden on yourself when things change in your life, you know? You get because cash flow can change, right? I mean, you may come up with expenses you didn't expect to have. You may lose some income because your job changed, or maybe you got fired for some reason, laid off. Like things happen like this all the time. And so having a shorter chunk of payments, like a six month chunk, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so even if you've established good financial habits and you're consistently generating good monthly cash flow, you could have some problems saying yes to things that you just don't need. <laughs> you don't need them, but you have access to the money. So for example, um, if the opportunity came up to wait two years and save some cash flow for a larger purchase, let's say a luxury home or a luxury item at your place, like a fancy car or a nice vacation, a cruise, you may treat yourself to that early because you have access to it now. It's just part of human nature. And that's okay if you have a plan for how to pay it back. If you don't have a plan for how to pay it back, then you're just creating a bigger burden on your finances. It's not helping you get ahead. And so it can be really tricky sometimes to figure out how much of a HELOC limit do you want to have for your first HELOC? Maybe they'll give you 50,000, but you just want 15 to start with because you just wanna get a feel for it. You wanna get your feet wet. And you know what? That's totally fine. I've I've actually raised my HELOC limit three different times, or I've, I've had three different HELOCs at three different limits. And what happens is my lender just asks me, like, why would you need more money? And I tell them what I'm doing. And they say, great. And they give me more. So that is not everybody's experience. I don't want to paint it that way. But I do want to say that if you can master that urge to say yes to purchases that you wouldn't normally say yes to if you didn't have a HELOC, you can start to overcome this greed or desire to have more all the time. And with that self-control, you allow yourself to get ahead financially because really the, the cash flow is the main way this whole system works. If you don't have the cash flow, velocity banking is not going to work. All right. So to wrap things up, if you want to start velocity banking, three easy ways. Number one, Download my free guide with the HELOC checklist. It's in the description below. You could look at my new course, How to Get the Right HELOC for Velocity Banking. I'm going to go step-by-step step and show you exactly what to do. Or you can request some individual coaching. That's the other option. So with all that being said, that's all I've got for today. Um, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more information as we develop more content for the channel. Thanks.